back to Everett's movie ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Everett's movie ever today. I'm going to talk about The Scream Team. The Scream Team is a 2002 Disney Channel original movie. It's directed by Stuart Gillard, cinematography by Philip Lindsay, editing by David Aaron and Robin Russell. Music by David Cate, and it's written by Dan Berendenson. The film stars Mark Rendell as Ian, Kat Dennings as Claire, Robert Boxdeal as Richard, Eric Idle as Coffin, Ed, Tommy Davidson as Jumper, and Kathy Najimy as Mariah. This movie is obviously supposed to be like another, you know, fun kid Halloween movie, but the edit for some of the horror edits were actually really, really well done, especially at the beginning when, for instance, Ian's in the basement with his grandfather's inventions. There's a couple good horror buildups that are really well done. So I think the edit kind of stands out in that way and that made me really excited. <laughs> The music in this movie actually kind of goes off, especially the opening song, the Scream Team song. It's like an absolute banger. I was like, oh, okay. Like you're setting me up for a good Halloween movie. Like I'm about to have fun with this Halloween movie. And I did. I think the music maybe outshines the story a little bit. And then later the actual score is also so stylized to the theme of the movie that I think it's really, really well done. And I'm pretty sure David could, I've like made a lot of compliments to David Cate in the past. So I think David Cate is uh, starting to stand out a little bit as a composer for Disney Channel because this was awesome. This score was really fun. I think the way the kids were introduced and the whole funeral scene was written really well. And then I think the hints and foreshadowing to Zachariah being a good guy and not just some evil ghost was also really well done. However, I feel like the movie kind of falls flat and I think it's a couple things, but I think the writing has a large part to do with it. I think the edit and some of the directing decisions maybe made the film not as like fun and horror-y at the same time as it could have been. Like Phantom at the Megaplex, like this has a similar vibe to Phantom at the Megaplex and that movie's like so fun and like ridiculously like a fun ride from start to finish, but also like a little scary, has some horror moments. And I feel like that's what it, this was trying to like capture the spirit of and it like didn't. I loved the sibling relationship. I love that they kept like trying to work together to figure out what was going on and try to save their grandpa. But it also like, fell flat in certain areas where I thought it was like gonna be a really, really fun time or a little bit scary of a time. And it, then it just like was like, they're kind of just playing detective a little bit with some crazy ghosts. Like it, it's almost like it wanted to be Phantom of the Megaplex and Casper, and then like got lost in the mix. By far and away, the reason this movie is as good as it is, is because of Mark and Kat. Mark Randall steals this movie. His performance in the scenes where he has to argue with his dad, the scenes where he's a little scared, the scenes where he's emotional, he steals this movie. And then Kat Dennings, obviously we know she goes on to be, you know, in everything, Two Broke Girls, Thor, just everything. She's really excellent. They stole this movie. It's the best part of the movie by far. Mark's scenes especially. I was expecting the, I wasn't expecting any visual effects, I suppose, actually. And then when there was like ghost wispies, I was like, oh, okay, whatever. But then Zachariah's effects happened. And I just wanna say the fire effects and the entire like moment for Zachariah was really well done, actually, especially for a decom. I think this is some of the best visual effects on a decom we've had yet. Besides like the fun 3D shots and like quints and stuff like that, I think like the fire effects that Zachariah had going for him were really well done, especially for a 2002 Disney Channel movie. So there is a parent death because the dad is the main character and the grandfather dies and that's his dad, obviously. And then they hint that their mom has passed away, but they never actually say the words or show anything. So you know it's seen or said on screen. So I'm not counting that their mom has passed away, even though it's very hinted at but never said fully, but the grandfather passes away. So that does count as a parent death. I do love the aspect of like getting the dad to learn that his dad loved him very much and is super proud of him and doesn't want him to make the same mistakes he did. I love that aspect of it, not focused on enough. It's like kind of hinted at, but they focus very heavily on Kat and Mark's characters, which makes sense. But if you're gonna go that route with like the dad learning that his dad actually like really loved him and wishes he could have spent more time with him and not like tried to push him to be 
um, what he knew he could be and stuff like that, I feel like it would have had a little bit more heart because it would have like connected more that Ian and his dad are going through the same thing. They really like, that's like an interesting heart part of the story that they kind of just like let fall to the wayside because they're just trying to save their grandpa's soul and Zachariah and all that kind of stuff. It's good, but it could have been better. The dad doing the scary voice right at the beginning scared the crap out of me. It's like, oh my God, I didn't know you could talk like that. And then overall, I do, I did have a fun time. I think, I think the ghosts that helped them, it was a little too campy. Even though like that's the vibe they set up, they set up a Caspery vibe. Something else, like it just didn't, something didn't take it the full way, but it wasn't too much. So I can't be like too mad about it, but I do feel it's missing a certain magic. But I did love, again, the sibling relationship and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's a good time and I do, I think I will remember it fondly. I don't know if I'd watch it every Halloween. I think there's a lot of things to learn in here. I think, you know, we learn that people might be doing things for like reasons that we don't realize, or I think we, you know, learn that rumors can be really damaging. Um, we learn that just because someone thinks outside of the box doesn't necessarily mean they're an evil person. I just, there's lots of lessons in this one, I think. Um, just like there's lots of lessons in all of them, but mostly I think it's about learning like, you know, your, your family, like just learning family values and, um, don't, you know, try to force your kids to be something, um, that you want them to be, just love them and they'll become the best versions of themselves they can and be open and honest with your family. I think that's a whole other thing too. Yeah, just lots to learn. That's everything I have for the Scream team. My final rating is six fires out of 10. Our total movie count is a parent death toll is. <laughs> Crack count is still the same. If you want to keep up with what movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter. You'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I put up videos every Monday, Friday, and sometimes Wednesday. Join Patreon. Come on, do it. Buy merch. Until next time, comment, subscribe, and I'm not sure if real life you are, so do you, and don't be Warner about it. I'm still recording.